Ford, the General Superintendent of the Liberia Islamic of God Incorporated. I want to honor all of my pastors and church leaders in Kipangos, in Swedru area, to be prepared for a major leadership conference that is intended to equip pastors and church leaders to be involved in the work of God. Honor the leadership of Reverend James Nyema, son of, uh, of Mahfibi Nyema, involved in the ministry, and he's coming to Liberia and provide leadership training. And I don't want you to miss it because that is going to be a very great opportunity for your uh, equipment for ministry. I want every pastor, every church leader to be part of this wonderful time of learning to lead God's people to greatness. The arrival of Pastor James from Morovia along with delegates that have come for this program. Coming here are also members from AFE in Zerju. They are all coming for this important program. Mother of Pastor Nima, James, and these are the two delegates that have come for this ceremony teaching today. We welcome them in a set of flavor. <laughs> I can see you in this place right now. Yeah, let's just thank God for what he has done. Father, we bless you. We honor you, Lord. We thank you for this wonderful occasion. We bless your name, Jesus. You are great. You are the Lord of hosts. We magnify the name of Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We give glory to your name, Lord. We worship you right now. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Put our name for the same right now. And the name of the we thank you, Jesus, for the truth. We thank you for this whole right. We collect you, Lord, know that you have done me. You thank you. We know you. We want you, Lord. You are the 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 Lord. You are and you need to accept that and find that leader position that God wants you to be in. Oh, oh, oh. oh yeah, he wants a lot. He's not willing that any should parent can love your neighbor if you don't love yourself. Whoa, I said something there, didn't I? Amen, can I have amen? Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We're talking about truth attained and a power that from us. Yeah.
your heart. I can see it in your eyes. I can hear it in your voice. And uh, uh, I, I, one thing that I know now is I cannot go back to, the, to the America and not do something about continuing to help my area. God loves you, and it is easy to see the way you love God. And you pray, and you worship, and you sing, and you dance, and you listen. Thank you for enlarging our hope. Well, certainly tonight, we are very much exceedingly thrilled. The three days of days of leadership workshop, inspiring leaders to witness a bit of blessing for us. Churches without any problem. And he is in Liberia organizing and conducting leadership workshops. He had had a very big leadership workshop in Kipamas, and he's planning another leadership workshop in Swedru and Plibo. And we expect to see many ministers from towns and villages and cities to gather there and go through a time of church leadership so that they can grow up to lead God's people in God's own path. I'm glad that he decided to leave all the beautiful churches in Monrovia and to come to worship with us. So, so this morning, Reverend James Nyoma will be ministering the word of God to us. He is a minister of the gospel. And he is actually, his ministry is based in the United States of America, where he's carrying on a very good ministry. But then he wants to be a blessing in Africa by becoming a hand of training for pastors who are in leadership. And so this morning, it is my joy to introduce to you Reverend James Nyoma, who will come to minister the word of God. Thank you. Amen. I'm glad to be sitting down beside the Bishop of the Assemblies of God Church. We have many pastors that have been to sit for big men like this. I'm glad that God has given me the opportunity. Yes, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you to say just like me. Look at somebody and tell them, say, go deep. Go deep. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 14. And we'll start from verse 22. But people that pray for things, they're believing God for different things in their lives. Some people are believing God for ministry, that God will expand their territory. Some people just want to know this one God more. How can God do all these wonderful things? They want to experience God. It's not just children. It's not just new Christians. But true believers like to honor. Even the Apostle Paul, the great man of God, say, I want to understand the mystery in the power of the resurrection. Amen. He said, I want to know God more. More, more, more. I want to know God. Many people are seeking for God for different things. But while we are praying and believing God, there are times when God package your blessing in an unusual way. Mm -hmm. He sends trouble to be the forerunner of your blessing. Amen. But at times you do not understand our blessing. That something good is coming. The disciples were in the boat. It was the perfect opportunity for all of them to walk on water. Hallelujah. Perfect opportunity. God is going around blessing people. And people are in the church, they need blessing. But for some reason, right in the church, others are getting blessed. And the others are just there. Among the single women, some are getting married. Among the single men, some are getting married. And some 
Yes, yes. Waiting, they are getting old. Many people like to chase miracles. Not every miracle is a real one. Yeah. Somebody might hear the same here. True. We can see the same person got better. They can even raise a dead person. And from what I come from, our people can do it. When they are dancing a the double, they will kill somebody for the person through it. And they will dance the whole day in the evening, they join the head back to the body, and the person lay. So even the Westerners can do that. That's not strange. But for some reason, churches today are running behind miracles. They're living behind integrity, they're living behind holiness, they're living behind righteousness. And this guy was preaching the word of God in the marketplace. The word is going to do a black around. So he said, Hallelujah! And he put something there. He kind of put something in the offering plate. One day, Pastor said, Hey man. And I was wondering whether you went to go buy his grocery. Why is he actually preaching? They put on the buses. So you see. Why are you so in the seat? They put her on the buses. So you see, why are you so in the seat? The problem about sea sowing, seeds don't grow everywhere. No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> so before I sow my seed, let me know to whom I'm yes, sowing. Yes. Some people get in the money, they go cook up on the full rice and eat it good, and for you, nothing will happen. Yeah. There is a song that says, They that wait upon the Lord, yes. He shall renew their strength. Yes. Sometimes believers have to wait for God's time. Mm-hmm. Let your opportunity come. When your time has come, there is nobody who can teach you. Yes. But when it is not your time, because you saw Peter and Jane and John doing it, you want to do it too, you will crash. Mm-hmm. But when your opportunity has truly come, it's no time to be praying now. It's the time to grab onto your opportunity and give God glory. For most of the disciples, they missed a good opportunity. It was a time for elevation. So they all walk on the sea together. And when they go home, that was going to be a good jubilation. But the only person celebrating when they go home was really Peter. Because he walked on water. The rest of them were in the boat. Let me tell you something shortly about leaving the boat to get it onto the water. Many of us are used to being in the boat because this is where we are used to be. My grandfather was in the boat and he brought me there. So and my grandma you. came. And so they develop a tradition and loony way. Mm-hmm. That this is how we've been doing it. My son, small brother, you small girl, you, what you want to do? And if you want to get out of the boat, they will conk your head. Yeah. Because this is how we've been doing it. Let's keep the status quo. But if you know who God has called you to be, you don't remain. Mm-hmm. 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 How many of us truly want to be like our grandma or our grandpa? Especially those of them who were bad people. Mm-hmm. Some of us, our grandparents were Really, really poor, they didn't have the mates. Will you be jumping up now in Morocco? I want to be like my grandma. Well, where grandma live? Oh, in Bone, to the village. What did he do? Oh, they want to find me the money. And they want to brush farm, then later the tap. Then they took wood, then they did all the hard work, so the hard work killed him. Oh, we can't want to live like that anymore. This time you go to school, your friends are riding good cars. You can stay in your air conditioned office with your car and all these nice things you have a place to put your family in case they're going to good school this is the life now but how do you leave the place of tradition where everybody was used to being to step it out into the place where God actually wants you to be Amen. that is called faith to do that you must learn one you trust God all right. many people can say with their mouth I trust God I like the but that the more people who can say they love God and trust Him are the pastors, really. Mm-hmm. The pastors say with their mouth, they tell everybody else, but they don't do it. I go to churches and I watch. And I say my mother, and the pastor preach for everybody to bring offering. But you look at the pastor offering. <laughs> Some of the pastors judge that hallelujah. But if we put in plenty of money, start speaking in tongues. But that pastor never put your offering. In. So why is the word of God good for the congregation and not good for the pastor? Doesn't he want blessing too? Pastors know how to pray for other people when they get problems. But many times pastor does not know how to pray for himself. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> we must be able to trust the word of God. They were all disciples together. Jesus taught them the same way. But it was Peter who decided to trust the word. Who said, if Jesus can walk on the water, then I, Peter, too, I can walk on the water. I just need his permission, that's all. So many people jump out of the boat without waiting for their time, without Jesus calling them. They could have 
Some people just like the book because that's how they have been doing it all the time. So if you want to change it, they turn against you without knowing that progress is coming through you. But we as believers need to step out of the boat, apply our faith, and trust God. The people who are in a boat, these people can be the problems to progress. Mm -hmm. It is where you are. It is your family. It is your friends who are actually the enemies of progress. Because these people, if you want to get out, is it, are you sure to create that? You will not make it. They begin to prophesy badly over you. Oh, that's why you want to do that. Nobody did it in your place before. But if nobody did it before, that means that maybe somebody needs to start it. All the things came about because somebody had an idea, and that idea grew. And we all became a blessing. So the people who work with us usually pulled us down. Because some people don't want to go for, so they like your company, so you'll stay together there. It's a problem that says misery loves company. But all the people say, yeah, the way things is high in Moravia. The way the other one hard, the way the other one hard. How will do it say? You go out there, apply your faith, and God will help you. Yes. Others want to go to school, they're believing God for scholarships. Some people want to work, they're looking for a good job. They hire other people. As a matter of fact, sometimes they hire the people who are not even believers. Exactly. The way you pray, give God some. So you and I have to remember, even though God can do anything at any time, but you're not the only one praying to Him. There are many other people who are praying to God. So when your opportunity comes, you want to seize it. Because you don't know what other same opportunity will ever come again. Don't be afraid of things. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is out there in the world. The Bible says, by the power of God and by his blood, we shall overcome. Use the word of God to your advantage. And you will see what God will do for you. I pray that God will bless everybody. I pray that God will help all of us know him more. I pray that God will open himself to us so that we will be able to understand what God really wants us to become. Because when we come to the place to know who we are in God, then everything about us changes. I pray that the grace of God will cover you. I pray that God will bless this work that will grow out to be the cathedral that God has promised. Amen. The Bible always said, do not despise the days of the little beginnings. That's true, I could have worshipped at other churches. It didn't matter to me when you told me, oh, it's a little place, sure. If the people of God are there and I'm one of them, why not? I just want to encourage all of us to be what God has called us to be. As God is commanding us to launch into the deep. Raise up your hands and bless the name of the Lord. It's your season.